All right, guys, so let's take a minute and break down exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. So we've been out basically just pond hopping uh, all day, throwing one of our favorite baits to throw in these urban pond situations. And this is the Lucky Craft LC series of crankbaits. Now, when we fish these urban ponds and these concrete ponds, you know, these are super highly pressured fish. These are smart fish. They get a ton of pressure. And, you know, bass are bass, right? They want to ambush, they want to be the predator, but a lot of times it's a challenge in these ponds because there's not a lot of structure, there's not a lot of places for them to hang. The shore is the most obvious place, but you've got ducks and people feeding ducks and fishermen and, you know, people running. So, you know, the fish get in a funk a lot. And I think it's just instinct as an angler that when fishing gets tough, we tend to slow down, we switch to soft plastics, we grab something like a drop shot or a worm, and we tend to just fish really slow. And in my experience, the exact opposite is usually the best case in these you know, urban and pond settings, and that's to throw reaction. When a fish gets kind of lethargic and turns off, it's very easy for him to see a slow moving worm and just kind of get out of the way. But when you have a bait moving very quickly that deflects off something, the instinct of that fish causes it to react and grab a hold of the bait. And that's why something like a crankbait is so effective. I find this to be the most effective reaction bait for these kind of ponds, just because you can move it fast, you can fish quickly, and it's really you know, great at deflecting off the bottom. And who knows what's gonna be on the bottom. I mean, literally Jeff and I have caught, you know, bottles and cans today and bags and, you know, so you never know what you're gonna get when you're fishing uh, in the city. So something that deflects is obviously a great idea. So let me run through the baits we're throwing, why we're throwing them, the setups we're throwing, and I'm gonna show you guys how we're utilizing them. So. You know, first off, you know, Lucky Craft is famous for the Lucky Craft LC 1.5. I mean, this is the bait that put them on the map. Uh, this is the original 1.5 size crankbait from Japan. This is the bait that pretty much every other lure manufacturer has knocked off at this point, and for good reason. It's just highly effective. What's great about the LC 1.5 is it's designed to be a grinder. So it's a bait that you can throw out and literally just grind through the rocks and the build of it uh, just allows it to bounce and deflect off the rocks. And if you get in trouble and you feel that it loads up a little bit more and it's about to snag, if you just pause, it's a high float. So it'll, it'll kind of lift up and off. So this is usually my starting point. This is a staple in, you know, big lakes, tournament bass fishing. But what Lucky Craft does so amazingly well is they put that same tech into smaller versions as well. So this is a Lucky Craft 0.5, and the LC is available you know, in larger sizes than the 1.5. You can go up to a 2.0 or 2.5, and it also drops down into some of these smaller sizes, like a 1.0, a 0.5, and even a 0.3. This 0.5 is kind of a shore fishing, pond fishing staple for me. It's available in a regular you know, square lip as well as a DD. So if you're fishing a little bit deeper water, you can throw the deep diving version. If you're fishing shallow water, you can go with the square bill. So let me, let me run through the setups really quick. Uh, typically, I will start with a 1.5 if I feel that the pond has some bigger fish or they're feeding on bigger prey. If, they're, if I think they're feeding on bluegill uh, or maybe full-size shad, I usually go with the 1.5. And the reason I go with the 1.5 is because I can throw it on normal-sized gear, right? I can throw it on my normal rod, normal line. So for me, I use the Destroyer P5 Mad Bull almost always for my square bill. I can throw it on a seven to one or eight to one, you know, Steez A. I can throw it on 16, 18 pound fluoro. So this way, if I do get a bite, I've got a actual rod, especially if I hook up with a good one, I've got a, a big rod that I can control the fish. Jeff and I lost a good one just a minute ago on the bait finesse and had I had had that fish hooked up on you know a heavier gear, I would have been able to work it a little bit more. So you're gonna have a little bit better land ratio with the full size if you can get them to bite it. Now, very simply, what I'm doing when I'm out here at a pond is again, I'm thinking about the bass and the instinct of a bass and how it's going to relate in ambush. So the simplest 
place for a fish to ambush in a pond like this or a little concrete pond like this is going to be on the shore right so you know they can utilize the sloping bank underwater in the bank to you know ambush prey and get prey to come up against the shore so the first place i always start is i usually just kind of walk the bank of the shore with the crankbait so you know the cast is going to look something just slightly off and then i'm going to parallel it and now you can fish different speeds you can go slow you can go fast you can really go a lot of different speeds with this crankbait but what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get it to bang around on the ground and deflect and just kind of grind on the rocks or whatever that bottom is. If I'm not getting bit on that cast, then I'm going to go a little bit tighter. Okay, and then same thing, and I'm going to feel it kind of get into the rocks, and then I can pause and let it float up if I feel like it's going to get stuck. And if it's not going to get stuck, then I'm just going to kind of keep grinding it. You can kind of see my rod tip. It's just boom, 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 kind of bouncing through those rocks. And all I'm trying to do is get one of those bass that's just kind of laying there, uninterested in feeding, to hear that coming. And all of a sudden, it deflects in front of its face, and it grabs it before it had a chance to think about it, right? So I will go all the way until I'm like literally just super parallel and just grinding that little edge right there. And a lot of times, that's the edge that the fish will utilize uh, and ambush the prey. Now, if I'm not getting bit shallow, right, then I will try to pick apart some of the deeper water and see if I can figure out, is there a ledge, is there a rock pile, is there something out there uh, that those fish might be related to? And this is usually when I'll go to the DD version, but a lot of times what you can do, even with the square bill version, is a lot of times if there is nothing out there, right, the fish will just suspend. So to give them something to react to, instead of just kind of casting and winding in where the bait's just moving, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll kind of direct the rod to the right, and then I'll kind of swing it back to the left, and then I'll kind of swing it back to the right, I'll kind of swing it back to the left, and what that's doing is it's causing that bait to swim in different directions. A lot of times on just that turn, and as the bait turns to different ways, that can be enough of a movement to get the fish to react. So a lot of things you can do with a square bill, even if you're fishing in open water. Now, let's say uh, you're not getting bit, right? Or let's say you see some form of bait life and it's tiny. And this is the case most of the time uh, when I fish these you know, urban ponds in smaller settings. Most of the time they're not feeding on full-size shad or big blue. They're eating tiny little things, either, either little shad, little minnows, um, or just, you know, something that's really small and really tiny. So when that happens, that's when I'll gravitate to the 0.5 or even the 0.3. Now, I like the 0.5 the best because I can still throw it on casting gear. Now, I'm a huge fan of, you know, bait finesse and light line uh, in light gear. So this is the setup that I generally will throw this on. Uh, this is the Mega Bass Destroyer P5 Pop X stick. Uh, so it's a really light kind of whippy rod. It's short. I've got a Daiwa Steez Air, you know, three pound to four pound fluorocarbon. So really light line. But this is going to be a very finesse offering that's going to look very natural to these fish but still give me that same deflectiveness and that same uh, you know, reaction strike that I'm looking for. It's gonna bounce off the same way. So I'm gonna literally pick it apart the same way. All right, I'm gonna make the same cast. I'm gonna grind it exactly the same way. Make sure I'm feeling the bottom. Okay, there's the bottom, there's the rocks. I'm literally just gonna kind of grind it. And if I feel that it's getting stuck, I'll just kind of pause for a second, let it lift up, and then return to the grind. Now. If I'm fishing super shallow, like let's say it's only a foot or two and I want to keep the bait up a little higher in the column, what's great about the LC is you can keep the rod tip down like I just demonstrated or you can just lift the rod tip up and this will just keep it from diving too deep. It's going to it cause it to make it a little bit more horizontal but it'll keep it a little higher in the column and then I can kind of work it up and over trees or over bushes. I can change a lot of the retrieve rate with it. I can kind of do a lift and drop, uh, you know, stop and go. So there's a lot of different things you can do. You know, Jeff was demonstrating the other day uh, to me some of his techniques uh, where he makes this really tight little cast and just kind of gives it like almost like a jerk, like a jerk bait, uh, where you can just kind of get it to move a couple times and then pause it. And a lot of times on that pause, 
they will eat it as well. But same thing, if I'm gonna pick apart this deeper water, I'm gonna switch to the DD, I'm gonna make a longer cast, and on the lighter line, it's going to allow me to get the bait down into six, seven, eight feet and kind of pick apart some of those rock piles down there. Now, if all else fails, right, uh, and we just gotta keep going smaller and smaller and smaller, that's when we can pull out the 0 0.3, which is the smallest version of the LC. So this is a super micro uh, little crankbait, but it's gonna perform in the same exact way as the 0 0.5, the 1.0, and the 1.5. So it has that same great cover deflection, but just in a super, super tiny package. I mean, you can see it's just barely bigger than like my thumbnail. Now, uh, if you are, you know, super verse, at BFS, you can certainly get away with throwing it on casting gear. I find that the 0 0.3 throws way, way better on spinning. So a lot of times when I come uh, to a pond like this, I'm not sure what to expect, I'll bring a casting and a spinning just in case I have to downsize to this. Uh, but same exact thing, I'm gonna go with three or four pound line. Um, you know, whatever kind of whippy spinning rod you have that you like is great. This happens to be a great hunting trout rod, just a little 1,000 spinning reel, and again, three or four pound fluorocarbon. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna make these kind of parallel casts. This should always be your starting point, right? Start on the shore and then kind of work your way out to deeper water with it, right? And again, just because it's a crankbait and it has that built-in action, ideally we're getting it to deflect off something in the lake, whether it's the side, the bottom, uh, a tree, a rock, right? Um, but if there's nothing for it to deflect off, you're gonna have to give it the action. Right? So again, that could be something as simple as just rotating and pulling the bait to the left and then pulling the bait to the right, right? And then pulling the bait back to the left to give it some movement. It could be something as simple as giving a couple of hard cranks and then a pause so that it floats up so that it appears that it's deflecting off something, you've got to give them something to react to instead of just something that's going to move past them where they can just kind of get out of the way, okay? So between these three sizes, uh, if you guys are fishing these urban ponds, you know, any shore fishing uh, that you're doing at all, the LC series of crankbait is just, it's so versatile, right? And it's one of the few you know, really high-end crankbait series that the brand puts as much dedication and tech into these smaller sizes for us shore guys as they do the bigger sizes for the tournament guys. So, you know, if you guys are fishing, you know, big water and small water, like I do, you can take that same 1.5 or 2.0 that you throw in the big lakes, bring it out here, but then if you need to downsize, you can literally fish exactly the same way but with the smaller baits of the LC. So hopefully that was useful. I hope you guys incorporate the LC into your arsenal and I hope you guys catch a lot of fish from the bank. So until next time guys, enjoy, peace.